and welcome to prompt number 68. This is the leaf blower edition. Can you hear it? You can if you try. Here we go. All right, we have Cyclops and Swan. Another Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> I'm just joking. Okay, here we go. Oh man, my jokes are funny. Anyways, when I looked up Cyclops, one thing I did notice is that most of the Cyclopses, wait, Cyclopsi? Cyclops is plural, maybe? Why do I have to learn something during every prompt? Here we go. Cyclops, plural. So the spelling just adds an E before the S and I honestly can't tell if that's supposed to be Cyclopes or just Cyclops. So I'm just going to stick with Cyclops being the plural. Anyways, they're either number one are giant creatures and number two, they're always evil. So I did want to create a Cyclops creature. Number one wasn't giant and number two, I didn't want it to be evil or bad in any way. I just wanted to create a character that had one eye and I'm realizing that we're just zipping past my sketches and I'm not staying on the subject. So if you couldn't tell by now, I did want to get a sort of a grasp on how to draw one eye on a character because honestly, one eye on a character just doesn't make any sense. What does the eyebrow do? How do you show emotions when you have one eyeball and one eyebrow and just how does the face work? Because one giant eye, why does it always have to be one giant eye? Why can't it just be a normal sized eye? eyeball. And I'm going off the subject again. Okay, so basically from my sketches, right away I wanted to create someone that wasn't large, so obviously I went to the complete polar opposite of large and I went really small. So basically my Cyclops creature is a Lilliputian, which is basically a really small few inch tall person, like from the borrowers. I was gonna list more, but I honestly can only think of the borrowers. I thought it would be fun if this character rode on the swan and then I started to think about the relationship. When it comes to people that ride horses, usually they have a really tight bond or they have like a really good relationship with their horse because it's like a really close character or I guess creature, like a pet. They they feel really connected to the character, I guess. Why do I keep saying characters have pet? I guess you just create a bond when you spend a lot of time with someone and you go on adventures with them. And I did want to show that with the swan and the cyclops girl. Sometimes when I get to creating backstories and creating characters to these prompts, I get a little carried away. There's nothing wrong with that and I quite enjoy when I get into it, but sometimes I want to do a lot more than I can handle. Originally, this was going to be a three set of illustrations, which is fine, but honestly, I just couldn't get the first illustration to look right. Honestly, I've kind of been in a mental slump lately, but huh, you guys don't wanna hear about that. No excuses here. I wanted to have one really good, one super detailed illustration that was sort of the main illustration to the series. And then I was going to have two sort of looser, sketchier sort of illustrations to go with it. But the main illustration that I wanted was them going into battle and them being mid battle. It was going to be a very action packed pose. And I was really going to push myself to make it look, you know, action packed. But I ended up scrapping it because I just couldn't get it to look exactly like the other ones. And this is where my sort of obsessively controlled sort of habit kind of gets in the way with my illustrations. If everything isn't exactly the same on every single illustration, I just can't, I can't handle it. So as you can see, this is the original illustration that I was going to use. I inked it and everything, and then I just decided to ditch it. In fact, the original was going to be an eight by 10 illustration and I didn't like the way that one looked either. The main thing that I didn't like about this one not fitting in with the other ones is that it went off the page. If you can see here past all the color swatches, you can see that the wings and that wing was originally going to go off the other page. And I just didn't like how this one went off the page and the other ones didn't. Like that bothers me and that's kind of weird and it's something that I'm trying to, I guess, break away from. I just think it's a little ridiculous that something like breaking the frame can bother me and I'm just like, well, that is something I've got to get past. So originally I wanted them to be going into battle. I just didn't think her pose was actiony enough. At first she was going to be holding a weapon and they were going to be charging. But then I had her holding onto the swan like they were already injured, I guess, and that they were mid battle and that they were, they were towards the end of their battle and they were giving up or they were defeated. And I just decided that I didn't like it. So instead of getting hung up on that, I decided it was best to just move on and do the two illustrations, which I'm quite happy with. The first one I did was them after battle. As you can see, the swan has a wound on its neck and the girl has wrapped it up. She is also injured and they are basically just recouping after their battle. I had her naked because she was attending other wounds, I suppose, on her body. Maybe she was stabbed in the stomach. I don't know. But this is one of the moments that I wanted to show that the relationship is really close and I guess intimate. 
in the way that they share really bad times where they get hurt, but they take care of each other. So I thought that was a really good moment to show between the swan and this girl is that they survived and it only tightens their bond. And oh my God, that sounds so cheesy, but I really feel like I did a pretty decent job at portraying this on this illustration. Though I have to say with all of the recent really bright colors I've been playing around with, I really wanted to do something with really bright colors and it did not feel right going back to these earthy dull colors, especially because I did want to portray the mood in this illustration. So I didn't want to use a lot of bright colors. I made the sky really dark and stormy, and I guess I was able to make a brighter one for the second one, but man, I really do like playing around with bright colors these days. Am I changing? Who knows? The second illustration was a lot easier. It's a lot more simple, but I wanted to show the classic swan in water and I thought it would be fun to have her in the water as well. Maybe they are traveling and they decided to stop at a lake or something and she took a bath and she, I guess what I originally wanted to show in this illustration is that she is pretending to drown. And I wanted to show that the swan is like, girl, leave me alone. So in this relationship, maybe the swan is the more serious character and the girl is more silly and she has more fun. I don't know if it portrays that way. It kind of just looks like she's waving at the character. Why do I keep calling it a character? The swan, the pet. I don't, the character? Why do I keep wanting to say that? That's so weird. Either way, between the two, this is obviously the more simple illustration and that's fine. I really enjoyed the first one because I was able to play around with blood, which I don't do that often. But as you guys know, I love putting blood in my illustrations. It's just really fun to go kind of wild and just randomly put it out there. And it's just, I like it. <laughs> Before I started this illustration, something else I thought about doing was doing one of those swan pedaling boat things. Just as something goofy, I didn't know what to do with that idea other than the fact that I thought about drawing it. Maybe having two cyclops in love or a cyclops in love with a character that has a lot of more eyes or something. Obviously I didn't go with the idea and I'm quite happy because I really like the result, especially with the first illustration. The second one's just kind of something goofy that goes along with the first illustration, but I really do like the first one and I gotta say, wasn't happy with my sketches originally, but after I finished that illustration, I was quite happy with the results and it always makes me feel good when I'm like, you know what, this prompt wasn't so bad. So here is a poll, pick your mood. Are you the serious sad drawing or are you the happy and simple drawing? Right now I'm probably the sad one, but that's okay. I'll be the happy one again one day. All right guys, thank you so much for watching this prompt. I hope you enjoyed it and I can't wait to see what you do with these. See you on the end card. As usual, I had so much fun looking through all these wonderful space themed illustrations where the ideas were just all over the place. It was so much fun. I had no idea what I was going to see next. And we have our two featured art pieces here. The first one is by Daniel's art account, which I just found the fish's face so goofy and the colors were so bright. And I could just see this as the start of an adventure or the cover of a book or something. It just looks like there's a story here that's going to happen. It's great. I like it and a Musticus, which I just love this illustration because the ocean or the lake itself was space. And although it's kind of sad, I just love all of the details of the garbage in the water and especially because it contrasts the simplicity of the upper part of the image. I enjoyed these two pieces and I can't wait to see what you guys come up with for the next prompt. Bye.